I find that it's programming the reticular activating system or the, the RAS, which is the filtration device in the brain. And so I like programming that in the morning. Like I don't want to leave my house without setting my compass of what would I love to have happen. And I think that the mastery comes into play when you develop this simultaneity of very specific placing of the order and full and total surrender and detachment from outcome, right? And I think that that's truly the level of mastery where it's like razor sharp specificity of your desires and complete and utter detachment from outcome because you know that that fulfillment of the desire is not going to make you happy. And yet it does not absolve you of the responsibility of placing the order. There's a Winston Churchill quote, which I love, which is that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. And and I really love that because your life is never going to go according to plan. We know that. Your life is going according to plan 0% of the time. And yet it does not absolve you of the responsibility of planning, right? And so I think it's like that duality. It's that paradox that is where the richness is. And I think that's also the, de the duality that I'm in at the moment because I'm really in a time of grief right now, like deep mourning, deep loss, lots of death and not physical death, but like lots of death of chapter. And so the thing that I've been playing with right now, and yet I feel very happy, you know, I feel very light, I feel very vibrant, like I feel like I'm trusting myself and trusting nature more and more. And so the game and the dance that I'm in at the moment is how can I give myself permission to really feel my feelings, to not bypass, which is my former habit, but just like go in and cry and rage and be afraid and feel those feelings, but not allow them to be true and not allow the stories that my brain spins about those feelings to be true. And so the thing is that when we're in an uncomfortable situation, we don't like it. We don't want to feel those feelings. And so then the brain tries to solve the problem. Why is this feeling here? It's uncomfortable. Let's get out of it. What have I done wrong? What have they done wrong? Who's to blame? And so we start asking these really not helpful questions. And then the brain, because of this recency bias, because we are programming the reticular activating system really with every thought that we have, your brain will start to answer those questions. What did I do wrong? What did they do wrong? Why is this uncomfortable? How do I avoid this feeling in the future? Versus just feeling it and then putting your attention back on that which you desire to create. And so that feels like the dance that I'm in at the moment. And it's, I feel really proud of myself for the simultaneity of doing both. Yeah. And you're also very studied. You have had wonderful mentors um, throughout your spiritual life. Mm -hmm. And you've written a book, Stress Less, Accomplish More, which is an excellent gateway into the practice of meditation. But what I would like to, um, what I'm wondering about is, obviously, it's great. We're both big advocates for meditation. But in terms of, of understanding these other practices, you know, the affirmations and the power of positive thinking. And is there a book that has had the biggest impact on you in that? Like, let's, let's assume someone gets stressed less and they start meditating. They have the meditation part, right? Mm -hmm. How do you correct the intellect around and to make sense of all this other stuff that's happening so that you can start to um, implement more of the... Yeah, it's it natural optimism that we want to all experience in the in the face of chaos yeah so i would say it's for me it's not i guess in some degree it is optimism but to me it's the manifesting practice for me as of late has been more about being brave enough to go in and feel the intensity and the darkness of what is and then through that alchemical process it makes space for me to even hear the desires and then to start to vibrate at the frequency of the desire. And for me personally, like I, I will to give some thought to some books because I'm certain, I'm sure that I read some back in the day. Like I started really studying manifesting probably like 20 ish years ago. But for me, I like to receive it orally. Like I like to just have like almost a constant feed of lectures or inspiration or people that I look up to kind of like saturating my cells all the time. And I'll share some of the things that are turning me on in that regard as well. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day. So make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to love this one as well. 
And if you ever want to see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.